Today's the day, friends. We're gonna get this log on that mill. Let's go. Welcome back, friends, to Build a Lot of Acres. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to mill lumber and logs much bigger than your mill may be set up to do. So every mill is gonna have a capacity. That's gonna be both diameter of the log that will accept, as well as the length of that log. My Woodland Mills HM130 Max, for example, will mill a 30 inch diameter log that is 10 and a half feet long. If you add an extension like I have, it will do 16 foot 11. You can add more extensions and do longer pieces, but mine is set up with one extension, which means I can do 16 foot 11 inch timbers 30 inches in diameter. However, there are ways that you can do bigger logs that we're gonna go over in today's video, because I've had people ask, not only in comments of other videos, but also in person upon seeing the mill. They'll see the 24 foot carrying beams, which are six inches by 14 inches by 24 feet, and there's two of them. And those are what I'm actually milling in this video. And people have asked, how did you mill those? Because they had to flip them end to end and get the cuts lined up perfectly so it all looked like one continuous piece. And I'm gonna go over how to do that. The very first thing you're gonna to need to know is manual push mills are a lot of work. Even with big equipment like you see here with a Coyote NX4510, there's a ton of manual labor involved in milling. And unfortunately, there's not much getting around that. But coming up here is actually one of my favorite shots of all of my videos. When I release this huge 3,000 pound white pine, catch it with a grapple and then let it roll the rest of the way. I just think it looks really cool and it's a cool shot. And the reason that I'm doing that is so that I do minimal damage to my mill. Because if I just let it roll all the way, that's 3,000 pounds of force that would be pushing against the mill. It could move it, it could tweak it, break it, bend it. And I obviously do not want that happening to an uh, expensive mill. So let's go further into the video. Just how big is this log? 24 feet long. It was a 30 inch butt end and I believe it was around a two foot tip, maybe 22 inches. Now this log is white pine and like I said, it weighed out at about 3,000 pounds according to a log weight calculator. So much bigger of a log than I really would ever want to mill again. But I really had no choice because I had to make those two 24 foot carrying beams that I spoke about. What I'm doing right here with my daughter Clara is leveling the log. The log has a heart, which is the center of the tree. You really want to cut evenly in relation to that heart. If you're making you know, a box beam, for example, you want to box that heart so that it's pretty much centered in your timber. If you're making it six by six, the heart should be three inches in any direction on both ends. If you start covering, if you start cutting crooked through the heart, you could end up with the lumber twisting, warping, could be weaker, you could have a number of issues. But I'm gonna say this, when you're cutting a big timber like this and you have to flip it end for end, your first cut is pretty important. You wanna make sure that cutting enough that your heart center is a good distance so you can create your beams and you're also going to use that first cut as a guide to make every other cut which we're going to get into a little more detailed later on in the video but it's such an important cut in fact that I actually ended up making it twice I didn't like how much the end where I'm sawing here was left it wasn't enough of a flat spot so I ended up going down about another inch and I recut it because like I said that cut is really important and you want to make sure that you get it just right. So here's that second cut. I'll tell you what, these pieces might not look heavy when you're watching it on film, but a one inch thick slab that's you know 15, 16 inches wide, like this piece I'm cutting here, you can see just how wide it is. They add up to a lot of weight. So now I'm taking the log off the mill with the coyote. I'm flipping it end for end and then putting it back in the mill. There's really no other way to do it unless you had extensions and you could mill one continuous run of 24 feet, which most people aren't going to be set up to mill that long. And unless you were going to do it regularly, I don't think it's really worth buying the extra extensions. This is the only time I've ever milled anything longer than the mill was set up. But it's nice to know that you can do it. So what you're looking at here is I have the end on the right supported by the, not only the coyote, but I also have blocks underneath the log going to the bunk. So what you want to do is measure everything off of the bunks. That's crucial. That's how I did this. There was no special tools involved, no laser levels, 
no kind of you know laser gadgets. Everything was a tape measure measuring off the bunks. Could run strings, I suppose, but I didn't find that necessary. If you measure it off the bunk, the same on both ends, you're gonna end up being you know, pretty darn close. Keep in mind, this is rough saw and lumber. I'm not making cabinets here. This isn't for finished work. So if you wear off an eighth of an inch or even a quarter of an inch when you flipped it, it's not the end of the world, but when your cuts line up where your two cuts end, you really want it to be pretty close so it looks normal. You don't have a huge dive or a divot there. And, you know, I measured off the bunks for the part that was already sawed, made sure that that was the exact same. And then when you saw the other side of the log after flipping it end for end, you know that you're working with parallel lines at that point, and then you can start taking material off as you need to to get down to the correct size for the beams that you're making. By the way, if you want to see the full length videos of any of these, I am going to link them at the end of this video. I'm just checking this for square, rolling log. I'm trying to do this in such a manner that it rests against the grapple of the coyote so it's not slamming against the bunks because this log, you know, still weighs close to the 3,000 pounds. I haven't cut off that much yet. So that's a lot of weight that could be slamming down your bunks. And like I said, I want to avoid damaging the mill if possible. Therefore, I'm using the coyote to its full potential, letting that catch the log and take most of the initial swing and then slowly letting it down onto those bunks. But once you get that first cut and then you make your next cut and it's parallel, the size doesn't really matter. Now you know you have parallel cuts. And like I said, you can level everything off of those and line everything else up that you need to cut. You can see the part in the right end of the screen here, it's already been sawed. I'm gonna measure that off of the bunks and then I know that the next cut is gonna end up the same. I'm just pushing the log over to the stops as gently as possible with a coyote. Like I said, there's a lot of hand work for these big logs. You're gonna to need to use some muscle and some elbow grease. I recommend getting a really good cant hook. I use log right, I have videos of me using the log right and I also have a tour of me going to the log right facility and seeing how the cant hooks and PVs and other tools are made which if you're interested in that please check out some of my other videos on the channel it's a really interesting tour they're out of Connecticut so fairly local to me and it was a great time but here I'm just finishing up the cut you're gonna see that it lines up nicely with the other cut if you were off with this I would recommend keeping the blade higher than you think you need to be. Air in the side of caution. If you're an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch higher, or even a half inch, you can always lower the blade down and cut it again to line it up. But if you're under your other cut, there's really not much you can do unless you flip it back around, cut the other side to match it. So if anything, air in the side of caution, leave it a little proud, and then you can always recut it, which I've done in the past. But you're starting to see this square you're starting to see this log shape up into a cant, which is nice. This cant might not look too big, but I believe it's around 16 by 16 inches is what you're looking at here, which is a good size timber. I gotta whittle it down a little bit more to get those two six by 14 beams, which is what I'm making. I have a whole bunch of videos, not only of me cutting this big pine tree down, but also milling it up. I also have tons of videos of me milling all the lumber to make the mill building, which was the very first project I knew I wanted to make with this mill, was a building to protect it from the rain, snow, the elements, the sun, etc., etc. This is really starting to shape up nicely. And the more you take off, the lighter it gets, which is nice because it's easier to move around. And all the pieces I'm cutting off, like you see here, this is a nice, probably two inch thick piece, maybe a little more. That ended up turning into two by lumber. I don't know exactly what I made, I forget now, but. I'm sure it was rafters or floor joists or something that I made for the mill. But I'm getting closer to the end of milling this piece up. Once you get it whittled down to a good size cant, you can you know, start reducing it as need be. Like I said, I would say the keys are making sure that your first cut is the same off of the heart end to end. And then making sure all of your other cuts are parallel and square to that first cut. It's like a house. When you start with a good foundation, you're gonna end up with a good house. Everything goes off of the original foundation and that's really the key. This is the last cut. I'm milling this into the two six by 14 carrying beams, which are 24 feet long. 
and then I have Y braces supporting the end. So the span's really closer to, I'd say, 19 to 20 feet. So I just kind of made the beam as big as I thought I would need it and ended up working out well. This video was about seven months ago. The building's been up probably for a good five or six months and it's still holding strong, no sags in the beams. Everything's working out. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider checking out some of our other milling content as can be seen here. Thanks for watching, friends.